Something else that Kamal started in grade five, six um, was Genius Hour, where kids choose a project to work on for 10 weeks and they're in charge of skilling themselves up. So, you know, YouTubing how to do things, looking online how to do things. If they're using Google Sketch, they research that. They, I think we've really, kids um, that I've seen over the last five years have become really empowered in finding things out for themselves and they know where to look now and how to sort of deal with a bit of resistance when something's hard and push through that and, you know, ask each other and help each other. And that's something that I've seen really grow in the last five years, certainly from, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. an ICT perspective. Yeah. I just wanted to very quickly talk a little bit about sort of what I found after sort of five years of working with preps and, um, and apps and I've spoken a lot here about um, its teachers being really critical of the apps that we're using in the classroom, how to categorise um, the types of apps that you're using and really trying to encourage teachers to move away from um, the skill and drill digital worksheet types apps where you know two plus two equals four, um, move on to the next level. It's not actually helping kids um, build or create knowledge um, they do have a role in terms of reinforcing sort of known facts or skills like handwriting or as an assessment tool if the app has an inbuilt um, assessment sort of tool in it where you can sort of view their portfolio. But what I really wanted to talk today is about the importance of selecting the right app and then how to integrate that app into your, into your classroom, particularly into a, a junior classroom. So this is my blog. That I've been working on. Um, there's two new pages I've been working on lately, the App Supermarket, um, which has not just good apps, but other blogs and sites that uh, of people that I trust that I found that the apps that they suggest are really fantastic. Um, and the good app checklist. I just wanted to show an example of my prep planner from last year and how I would integrate um, iPad apps into my literacy program. So here we've got sort of, if you look to Tuesday, letter of the week detectives, a whole class activity. And then I break my kids up into groups. So I've got five learning groups here with the groups broken up into reading levels and writing levels. So depending on whether it's a, a writing activity or a reading and viewing activity um, would depend on which group the kids are in. But what I wanted to show was that for the, the first group, which is my, you know, a low group or a support group, I've specifically listed the app and what they're doing within that app. So for example, if they're doing red writing, those kids are focusing on um, phonics and handwriting, looking at the correct identification of lowercase letters. So I've chosen specifically, even within that app, what they're doing, and then moving on to another app where they're doing um, a book creator activity. Whereas if you look in the next group, they might be doing something different. So they're looking at sorting sounds with the same thing. So it's based on a very, very specific focus area. Um, and then that's reflected in, in the next week's planner as well. So if you are using apps to assess, that's great. But if you record that information, that can then influence your teaching and the types of apps you use the next week. So that's the sort of thing that I've been trying to sort of get through um, to teachers that are perhaps unfamiliar with using iPads in their classroom, that they're not just, here's, here's an English folder and there's lots of games, phonics and handwriting and off you go have a play, or here's a maths folder, off you go and play, or a babysitting tool, that th these are incredibly powerful devices and if they're used properly, I've got a teacher-guided group with my guided reading, you're basically giving yourself another teacher-guided group because it's so levelled and so specific and so scaffolded, um, you can basically utilise it as an extra teacher in your classroom. So um, I won't go into the other stuff. Um, I just had a few notes just based on um, the things that were discussed at the Queensland conference and, and today. I think... <laughs> What I've sort of learnt from um, this project is that we're really shifting away from using games purely as an engagement tool. So here's a game, let's play it, and now let's write about it for three weeks. I think what we're moving into now is games to support 21st century skills um, and games that are really integrated into whole units of learning. So, for example, the Minecraft unit that we're doing this term where the game's not the focus, the game's the tool. And that's how I'm seeing ICT develop in our school now. 
And even if we look back five years to when I started there, you'd have your one hour Mac lab time and that's where you did computer skills and you had your ICT planner that was separate. Now, we don't have an ICT planner because it's such a tool, it's integrated in every planner, our maths planner, our RLP, our English planner, it's what are you doing on the iPads, how are you using computers, not just using it for the sake of developing computer skills, but because it's a really amazing tool that's supporting what you're doing in classrooms. So I think that shift has been really interesting to see and it's just a matter of making sure that everyone sort of catches up and is sort of showing really good practice. Um, Just one more thing to add on what Trish was saying before. I think in terms of using games in your classroom and making teachers feel comfortable about doing that, having a collaborative team approach is really handy in terms of really having clear curriculum um, and assessment guidelines and being as a team, I think you're less likely to be attacked as a parent body um, if the whole level's doing it because you've got six people that have made that decision as opposed to, to one. You've got a little bit more um, backing. Um, and, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. I'll leave it there. <laughs>